Mountain Blade is what happens when you mix two gaming genres, RTS and RPG. 10 years after Warband, we finally get Bannerlord. Well, in early access. So should you buy it now, or is it still way too broken to be enjoyable? I'm Hitman89 and this is my honest review on Bannerlord. Without further ado, we're gonna start with the graphics. This is what the game looks like when it's maxed out, at least on my PC. But for this review, I use the mix of high, medium and low settings. We'll talk about the frame rate in a second, but if you have a shitty PC, then you probably want to know what the game looks like on very low. So take a look. Now I want to point out a few things here and there, like first of all, Bannerlord looks slightly outdated, but for a game with so many units on screen, I think the graphics are more than okay. Well, apart from some character faces that just look weird. Moving on to the animations, and other than the ones that look a little too stiff, you're gonna see some really good animations here, like this one where the guy took an arrow to the ass, oh and there's also the animation where somebody falls off their horse, it's pretty impressive. Almost as impressive as my shitty aim, by the way this is probably my luckiest shot so far. But hey, you guys don't give a fuck, right? So let's get back to the review and let's talk about performance. Cause optimization wise, things are not looking good. Unless you have a super high end PC, you're gonna have to deal with the shitty frame rate, especially in siege battles. Oh and by the way, I tried playing on very low, but uh, the performance gain wasn't nearly worth playing with these horrible graphics, so I switched back to a mix of low, medium and high settings, since the game still ran about the same. And I know some guy with his fucking i9 and his RTX 2080 Ti is gonna tell me, boy, I don't know what you're talking about, the game runs just fine. But for real, if you have an average PC, the game is gonna run like shit. Now let's move on to the sound. The soundtrack is really good, the main theme is great, each faction has its own theme and the sound effects are also pretty damn good too. The stuff you hear on the battlefield is super immersive, but when it comes to the voice acting, I don't know if this is gonna change later on or not, but for now, there's almost no voice dialogue. This is the only NPC that actually spoke to me. I was like, wow, this bitch can talk? But then I realized she was only saying like the first sentence of each paragraph, which kinda sucks. Anyways, I'ma let you listen to the game audio for like 15 seconds and then we'll move on to the gameplay. Before I reveal that information to you, I need to know more about your intentions. Now when it comes to the gameplay, Bannerlord starts off like a regular RPG. You create your character, you choose your background, and then you'll have your own party, clan, army, and kingdom. Anyways, let me tell you about Mountain Blade 2's pros and cons. Starting with the pros, the mix between RTS and RPG is just perfect for me. Sieging castles and cities, taking them, and then managing your kingdom is very interesting. Which takes me to the next pro, this game is deep. You can forge your own weapons, trade, get married, have kids, we should also be getting some diplomacy options soon, which takes me to the bad stuff. Bannerlord is certainly playable now, but it lacks tons of features. Some are essential to help you manage your kingdom, negotiate with other factions, the game also needs more dialogue options. Oh, and speaking of which, get in a loading screen just to talk to a guy and then only get one motherfucking dialogue option just doesn't make any sense. I mean, I know it's in early access, but the game has been in development for over seven years, so we should have some expectations, you know. By the way, thank god there are mods that solve some of these issues and the devs also said they'll be supporting mods more than they did with Warband, so that's awesome. Alright, let's go back to the bad stuff now. Range combat is great, but melee doesn't feel right. You don't feel the impact of your blows. There is a dismemberment mod which makes things better. I mean, I'm Arab, so if I can't behead people in a medieval game, the fuck am I supposed to do? Oh, and another thing I don't like that much about the game is the AI. It needs some work and there's a lot of stuff that doesn't make any sense. Like trying to convince an enemy to make peace by offering them money even though you're much stronger than them. There is also a quest where we have to sell mercenaries to another lord. Sometimes you find an enemy general with like a couple of units and instead of instantly accepting your offer, you still have to convince them to buy your mercenaries no matter how bad they actually need them. It's just an example but trust me, on this game you'll find tons of things that don't make any sense. Last but not least, some quests are very annoying. The first one that's gonna annoy you is probably the quest where we have to find 10 nobles. Spending a couple of hours looking for people is not really enjoyable. There are also quests that don't make any sense, especially when you have a good amount of money. Why would you risk your reputation and, you know, upset some people for like 1k when you already have a million? 
Apart from that, quests are super repetitive. We'll probably get some new ones soon, but that's how things are right now, so I thought I'd let you know. Now when it comes to multiplayer, I've only played it a couple of times, mostly because I couldn't find that many people online, and I just didn't feel like spending the whole day looking for a game. So if for some reason you're mostly interested in the game for its multiplayer, don't say I didn't warn you. Anyways, I've talked about the pros and cons and I think I said everything I wanted to say about the gameplay, so let's move on to the replayability. I know a lot of you guys will have multiple campaigns at once, some other people will focus on one campaign at a time and then start over several times, but only a tiny fraction of those players will actually play multiplayer, so it takes an eternity to find the siege game. But this game is designed to last for years. Mod support is a great way to encourage the community to keep on improving the game and adding content to it, so it's very replayable. And when it comes to the fun factor, Bannerlord is super addictive. You wanna jump in, play for 10 minutes and then jump out? Yeah, that's not gonna happen. I tried to do that and I found myself still playing after a couple of hours even though I was supposed to get some shit done. For real, no matter how broken and unpolished it is right now, it's still extremely fun to play. Now the game is gonna cost you 50 bucks in early access, and that's not cheap, but the devs have been released in a patch almost every single day. That's probably gonna slow down in the near future, but right now they're doing their best to fix the most important issues. So if you're a huge Mountain Blade fan, you're gonna get your money's worth. But if you're not a fan, then maybe wait for a sale or something and try to get the early access version for like 35 bucks. Cause in my opinion, that's the perfect price for Bannerlord in its current state. 10 years after Warband, this prequel's got tons of issues, it lacks some essential features, it's really fun to play though, and and it's got a lot of potential. It could easily be a 9 or even a 9.5, but for now, Bannerlord is gonna get an 8 out of 10. If you're a huge Mountain Blade fan, go ahead and get Bannerlord right now. As a matter of fact, I'm pretty sure you already have it. But if you're not a huge fan and you have an average PC, then wait for at least 3 or 4 months so you can actually get your money's worth. That's gonna be it for my honest review on Mountain Blade 2 Bannerlord. I hope you found it useful. Leave a like if you did and please check out my other videos. I make game reviews and top 10 videos that you might find interesting. Subscribe if you're new to the channel. It's been Hitman89. See you guys very soon. Marcos!